Hey, brothers and sisters, this is Brother Patrick, Pastor Patrick, that is, the pastor of this uh, virtual Praise God online church, hallelujah, the church invisible. Brothers and sisters, the truth is, is that all Christians in the world are one body. We are the church, hallelujah, the church invisible, universal, hallelujah, praise God, praise God Almighty, brothers and sisters, through whom all blessings flow, praise God. All ye creatures here below, praise God, Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. It's uh, Resurrection Sunday. Hallelujah. Resurrection Day. Hallelujah. Every Sunday, the first day of the week. Hallelujah. For the Gospels tell us clearly that early in the morning on the first day of the week, hallelujah, Sunday morning, our Lord Jesus resurrected. Hallelujah. There was an earthquake and the stone was rolled away. Hallelujah. Come and see the stone is rolled away. Come and see where his body laid. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. He's not here, for he has risen, the angels said. Hallelujah. Why do you seek the living among the dead? He is not here. He is risen. Hallelujah. He is risen indeed, brothers and sisters, and seated at the right hand of the Father, far above all powers and principalities, and forkness, forces of darkness. Hallelujah, brothers and sisters. We have the victory through Christ Jesus. Hallelujah. You know the Spirit of the Lord is upon me, brothers and sisters, to set the captives free, to open the blind of the eyes of the blind and the ears of those who are deaf. Hallelujah. He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit of the living God says to the church. Hallelujah. Jesus Christ, the same yesterday, today, and forever. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Blessed be the name of the Lord. From on high, the name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into him, and they are saved. Now, brothers and sisters, I had no idea what I was going to do on this video. But as soon as I started it, the Spirit of the Lord came on me. Hallelujah. Praise God. If you go see the video I just made earlier, an hour or two ago, on my regular YouTube channel, you'll see the difference. That's just me. Actually, I've been feeling a little bit uh, under the weather for a few days, and praise God, the Lord has healed me. Still recovering from that. Haven't been sick and since I started the ministry, really, in 15 years. Haven't had any kind of sickness like that, like a virus. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Praise God. I asked the prayer team from the Church of Firstborn to pray for me. Praise God, the Lord has raised me up and healed me. And, 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 and you know, brothers and sisters, I know the reason why I had this sickness. And uh, I had attacks from all areas. I had it come in like a flood. You know, and that's what the Bible says. When the enemy will come in like a flood, the Lord would lift up a standard against him. And that's what the Lord did. He, he's turned the tide in all things. It's like when Moses raised his arms, you know, and his... Uh, uh, or you know now, as I'm telling you, <laughs> Aaron and his brother-in-law, Hur, they raised up his arms. And every time Moses' arms was raised, the children of Israel, under the command of Joshua, they had the victory. And then when Moses would let down his arms, they would start to lose. And then at the end of the day, they won. And, and, and Moses called the name of the place Jehovah Nisi. God is my banner. And so for me, brothers and sisters, if you haven't heard me say, you know, the, you know, as we raise our hands, we're worshiping. For the Bible says, I will have all men everywhere lifting holy hands unto heavens. Hallelujah. Praising God. Blessed be the name of the Lord from on high. Hallelujah. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. That's the, the word I got. I had a vision and words from the Lord yesterday that I talked about. A quick version of the video that I posted earlier today on my regular YouTube channel. And you know I just put it out there even though I did cover lots of information. I put it out there for the for, for those who run to and fro brothers and sisters. But the videos I make on here by the grace of God is for the church, praise God. Not just, I'm talking about the church universal, brothers and sisters. But this group, the Lord gave me the name Church of the Firstborn. So it's for whomsoever who will be part of the Church of the Firstborn, who will see that. Now the Church of the Firstborn, he who has an ear, let him hear, brothers and sisters. I'm not talking about the group that, that I gave the name from, that the Lord gave me. I'm talking about from Hebrews, from the Word of God, Hebrews chapter 12. The Church of the Firstborn is those who's going to be raptured. That's the church of the firstborn. That's why, you know, when I'm making this video, the Lord gave me that song that I think I sang it last week. Every week I've been, you know, I just every week I've been talking about resurrection. 
every week the Lord has me on the theme of resurrection, which is talking about the rapture. The first resurrection was the Lord and even some of the people from the Old Testament. If you would carefully read at the end of the Gospel of Matthew, you will see that when the Lord was resurrected, many of the Old Testament saints were also resurrected, and many people saw them walking around Jerusalem the same day Jesus was resurrected. It's right there in the Gospel of Matthew in the last chapter. Anyway, so this other resurrection, the, the rapture, and that's what the Lord's talking about. Praise God, the rapture, brothers and sisters. So anyway, <laughs> my voice is changing. What can you do? I have a little bit of uh, issue still going away. Praise God. But anyway, brothers and sisters, so uh, I was just singing that song, and I think I sang it last week too, or, or one of these weeks since we've been making the, the videos every Sunday for the church of the firstborn. That's the, the word that I got from the Lord and the vision that I had. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into him and they are saved. We're talking about in the word that I got in the vision that I had was get into the ark. That's the same thing. Get into Christ. Get into the Lord. Hallelujah. Now for salvation, to become born again is one thing, brothers and sisters. By grace are we saved through faith, not of their own, but a gift of God. And I go through this all the time. Now if you would go to the website if you want to see and go dig it out yourself. That's the thing about it. People who run to and fro, they want all these like boom, 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 boom. But if they would just simply read their Bible and dig and study, even just a few minutes, if you have a good thing, to, you know, a good site that gives you some Bible verses, go look it up yourself. You know, that's the thing about it. Uh, and they, as the saying goes, teach a man to fish, you know, give a man to fish, he'll eat for today. Teach a man to fish, he'll fish for a lifetime. That's what being discipled is all about. The difference between you know, being a, a non-believer or a new believer and to be evangelized. And then to be discipled is to grow in the Lord. That's what people nowadays say, oh, that's old school. Yeah, no one, very few people are reading their Bible. That's why they don't know the word. That's why they're, uh, you know, the Bible says, you know, people, my people perish for lack of knowledge. They don't know the word. The Bible is what you need to know, particularly the New Testament. Particularly the New Testament. If you don't, you got to get the New Testament down right. Read the Old Testament as history and the New Testament for doctrines. And once you get all that mastered, then you can go back and read the Old Testament and gleaning out things, prophetic, etc. Prophetic, etc. People want the quick answers. They want it today. They want McDonald's. They want it hot and now. They want it right this minute. But that's not how God operates, brothers and sisters. God doesn't operate like that. God operates like he did with Joseph. Joseph had a dream when he was about 17 years old that his, that his parents and his brothers would bow down to him. Next thing you know, his brothers were jealous of him, sold him into slavery. And then, he was, and then when he was in slavery, he was doing good. Then he was falsely accused by his master's wife of, of attempted rape thrown into prison because he refused to sleep with her. He refused to sin and sleep with her and, 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 and uh, sin against God and also against his master, you know, to betray his master, sleeping with, her wife, with his wife. He was thrown into prison, falsely accused. And then, after dream interpretations of Pharaoh, he became the second in command of all of, Egypt, uh, all of Egypt, ascended to the right hand of the Pharaoh as the viceroy of Egypt and became Zephanapanea, which I made a video about the other day. He who saves his people in Egyptian language. Anyway, brothers and sisters, there's another message. And the Lord has given me so many messages, and I always keep forgetting to get into it. Have you noticed that Moses' father-in-law was a priest for an unknown god, Jethro? And then here is Joseph when he was married. He was given the daughter of the priest of those religions see you know to bring a conversion to bring a conversion to people in false religion that's a whole nother video anyway brothers and sisters praise God Almighty praise God Almighty I've been preaching because the Lord wants you to know that time is short time is so short brothers and sisters the day is near even at hand for us to depart out of this world brothers and sisters we have to be prepared to enter into the ark and I want uh, I, I'm gonna read to you here in a second but first, I think we ought to praise and worship the Lord a little bit because the world is evil out there, brothers and sisters. The Internet is full of cults, crazy people, trolls who will come up with all kinds of wacky doctrines. And what I was going to tell you before I forget, 
is that if you go to the website of Church of the Firstborn, I have a statement of faith on there covering all, every doctrine you need to know, basically, especially for anybody. Once you master all that, it'll take you a, a long time to go through everything that's on the statement of faith. Go there, and each statement of faith I give Bible verse after Bible verse after Bible verse. Go and read those and study those things yourself on 16 different topics. The Trinity, etc. Water baptism, etc. Go there and look at those things and study them out. Brothers and sisters, who wants to grow in the Word of God and grow in understanding of doctrines and things that we know to become a born-again Christian, etc. It's a good start. Once you master all that, which take a long time if you study it deeply, it would take you months or years to even study it all out, brothers and sisters. Get it all in your own mind. Get your own understanding of the Word of God, not what someone told you. Then you won't be tossed to and fro, as the Bible says, by every wind of doctrine, of cunning, you know, cunning and craftiness of the wolves in sheep's clothing that's out there in this world and on YouTube and every place else. All kinds of false doctrines. Even on the video I just posted about the rapture, I had somebody trolling on there. Someone trolling saying that you're saved when you're water baptized. That's not true. You're not saved by water baptism. Water baptism is an outward act of obedience to the fact that you are born again. If I'm born again, then I have a desire to please God. Part of that is being water baptized. Part of that is joining a fellowship group, whether it be a Bible study at somebody's house. That's already church. If you don't, if you have some people have to work on Sunday, they have a family to provide for. You can't just quit your job today. You can try, pray about it. Lord, make a way. You can quit your job. That's fine. There are people that get saved every day that they have a job that's a. Uh, you know, a lot of factories, etc. They work 24 hours a day. You know, the businesses run 24 hours a day in this global world. You know, some places it's Saturday when it's Sunday in the States, etc. Global businesses like UPS, whatever. Wherever people work, FedEx, etc. You have to work different hours. So you can go to Bible study on Friday night. That's your church already. Where two or more are gathered in my name, there I am in the midst of them, the Lord says. Don't get caught up in the fact of all this, you know, pomp and circumstance and ceremonies can fellowship, even this channel right here with a chat room on the website, etc. It's fellowship, brothers and sisters. You can fellowship. Call people on the phone, brothers and sisters, on the phone and pray. Talk about the Lord. That's already church. You know, church is all those forms. As a matter of fact, read the book of Acts. The church was held in houses. Church was held in homes. It wasn't all these big fancy buildings and all that. Whenever they talk about building a building, they always start quoting about uh, from the Old Testament, about building King Solomon's temple and all that. Nothing in the New Testament about, you know, any kind of a command or anything to build buildings uh, for churches. Even though, of course, if you have too many people to fit in a house, I started several churches, brothers and sisters, that became too big for a house. I had like 30 plus adults in home churches. And then I turned them over to Filipino pastors and they, and they started meeting in uh, church, other churches' buildings on uh, odd hours, Sunday afternoon, etc. Anyway, brothers and sisters, Let's worship the Lord and get ourselves a, a, a cleansed and free spiritually, mentally, and physically from the world. And uh, number one, but number two, let's minister unto the Lord. Before the Bible says the Spirit of the Lord inhabits the praises of His people. Now I usually play uh, the hymnals. I want to play something different today. Lots of songs are copyrighted, etc. If you play them on here, they'll block out the audio sometimes, etc. So... Uh, you have to be careful what you play, but I think this one is, is clean, and uh, we can hear it. And uh, praise the Lord for, for a few minutes, and I want to teach out of Psalm 23, brothers and sisters. Psalm 23. Let's worship the Lord for a minute.
Break every chain. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Worship Him. Praise Him. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every chain. Say it. Speak it. Faith comes by hearing. Hearing of the Word of God. Speak it and hear it. Hallelujah. There's power in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Sufficient sacrifice, hallelujah! Hallelujah, free so freely given, such a price. Thank you, Lord, for our redemption, hallelujah! Thank you, Lord Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah, let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Let's praise Him. Hallelujah! Hallelujah, praise you, Lord. Brothers and sisters, I want to skip ahead a little bit because uh, I played that song before and I want to hear, uh, I want to uh, play a different part of this song. played this one in the past, those who have watched my videos. And I want to play a, a different part in here of a different song in this uh, worship session. Let's worship Him. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory to God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. Bless His name. Bless His name, brothers and sisters. Bless His name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Lord. Listen, uh, 
I want to share, uh, I want to give the interpretation of a dream that the Lord had given me while I go into this because I really feel led by the Lord to do it. I had this, I had two different dreams, two different dreams. In both of these dreams, there was this uh, big, it was dragon. In one of the dreams, a dragon was trying to get me, and another one, it was these beasts. And the interp the and 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 at the end of the dream, there was a power supply going to the beast, and I had the power to cut off the power. I could cut off the power to those beasts. I could cut off the power to the dragon. And so here's the point. And then there was a lot more to it, but the lesson is, and the Lord is telling me to tell you guys this: those chains, breaking every chain, and all that. The power is in your hand to be free right now to every chain of the enemy to be broken in your life of sin. Right now, it's your in your hand, hallelujah. Number one, to get born again, hallelujah, we know that. We're talking about to get saved. But to repent, repentance, grace unto repentance, the Bible tells us. God gives us grace unto repentance. It's not just saying some sinner's prayer. That's part one. That's part of it, to believe. Confess with your mouth and believe in your heart to call upon the name of the Lord. As I mentioned in a video the other day, this is uh, an expression. It's not just, hey, Jesus, call upon His name. It's to cry out to Him and acknowledge Him as Lord. Even Paul, when he got saved on the road to Damascus, Acts chapter 9, he said, Lord, what would you have me do? He recognized Jesus was Lord and called Him Lord and said, What would you have me do? And the Lord commanded him that moment, Go to Damascus to a street called Straight and go there into this house. You know, and he was led there. And then I'll show you the things you're going to do for me. But you must suffer greatly for me. The Lord told him. What great things he would suffer for the Lord. Praise God Almighty, brothers and sisters. When you recognize that He's Lord and Savior, we ask Him, Lord, what can I do? What do you want me to do? That's a whole other sermon. I never even thought about that one. A whole other sermon I want to show you. It's the same meaning of another Bible text that the Lord gave me for you. That's one. Another Bible text that the Lord is telling me to tell you is that when Jesus saw His disciples, He said, follow me, follow me. He didn't say, hey, believe I'm the Messiah. As a matter of fact, he didn't even tell him that right off the bat. He just kept, he only told, he told Nicodemus he was the Messiah. Oh, the, the, not Nicodemus, the blind man. He told the blind man who healed of his vision. He said, I'm, and John, he, he said, it went and washed the mud off his eyes. He said, I'm the, you know, he said, I am he who you're talking to. I'm the Messiah. He told the woman at the well, two people, John chapter four, he told the woman at the well, you know, I'm the Messiah. So two people he told the blind man who made the mud, put on his eyes and washed it off. And I think that's John chapter 7 maybe. Then John chapter 4 he told the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman who had been married four times and then was living with someone that was not her husband. He told her he was the Messiah. He didn't tell his disciples that outright in, for a long time to the end. That he was the Messiah until later on. When he met them, he said, hey, follow me. He told his disciples to follow him. Then later on Jesus said, he who does not take up his cross daily and follow me is not worthy of me. To go in the rapture, to be a Christian, the word Christian means follower of Christ, disciple of Christ, a student of Christ, a follower of Christ, not a member of a church, not a, a, a participator in a, a lavish ceremonies at pomp and circumstance of Dagon fish wearing hat churches, etc. That's the, you go look that up. Dagon is a god in those hats that they wear. Uh, and these bishoprics and all this, they wear it. It looked like that. None of those things is being a Christian, but a follower of Jesus. To be a follower of Jesus Christ, brothers and sisters. That's why Paul, when he got saved, he called him Lord. Lord, what would you have me do? That's what you should be asking the Lord every day. Lord, what do you want me to do? Like me. He said, I want you to be a preacher. Just like yesterday, the Lord gave me the visions and the words, and He says, I want you to tell my people to get in the ark now. 
That's the command that the Lord gave me. That's what the command of the first church of the, of the firstborn is. To prepare the bride to meet the bridegroom, a.k.a. the resurrection of the dead, a.k.a. the rapture. Every week I've been doing the videos for this channel. I didn't set the theme. I didn't intend on doing every week the theme of the resurrection. But, you know, you know, get a clue, get a hint. I am led by the Spirit of God and God keeps having me talk about the resurrection slash rapture. So what does that tell us? That's what He wants us to do. Get ready. Get prepared. 23rd Psalm. It's another complete text that the Lord gave me as a witness to what I'm telling you. Listen to this. The Lord is my shepherd and I shall not want. The good shepherd, John chapter 10. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. I want to read the whole thing. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for His name's sake. I can do a whole sermon on this and I should. Yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil if thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Oh, this is a marriage supper of the Lamb. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup burneth over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Listen, brothers and sisters, I'm going to do a whole, I'm going to go through maybe the whole thing. The Lord has given me so much just out of this text. The Lord is my shepherd. Okay. He's our shepherd, the good shepherd. John chapter 10, he laid down his life for the sheep. My sheep know my voice and the answer not to another. I, I, I need to do a whole lot more deeper teaching on this. There's so many layers, brothers and sisters. Layer after layer after layer. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. Let's talk about that. I just got through saying, to be a Christian is to be a follower of Jesus. Now, if you don't follow the shepherd, he leadeth me. He doesn't say that he grabs me by the neck and drags me. It says he leadeth me. So that means I got to follow. And that's what's wrong on YouTube with the trolls as an example and people in this world and people in all these churches, they're not sheep, they're goats. They want to butt, butt, butt. But sheep follow and goats butt. That's why Jesus separated the wheat, uh, the sheep from the goats. Matthew chapter 25. Goats representing the devil and his children. Sheep representing the followers of Christ. Jesus was a lamb slain from the foundation of the world. He was the Lamb of God that takes away the sins of the world. Hallelujah. That's why sheep are in the image of the Lamb of God. That's a whole other sermon. I, I never thought about that before, but there you go, brothers and sisters. So you can't be led. Still waters represents away from tribulation. A turbulent, rushing water, even though it may sound cool, but to sheep, sheep are afraid and scared of loud water. Tribulation. So God would lead us, the Lord Jesus Christ would lead us to the still water, to the marriage supper of the Lamb, with the Lamb as sheep. He leads us there. So the way to be raptured is to follow Jesus, follow the Spirit of God, as the Bible says, and I always quote it all the time, Romans chapter 8, verse 14, those who are led by the Spirit of God, these are the children of God. His Spirit, verse 16, Romans 8, His Spirit bears witness with my spirit that I am a child of God. So how do you know you're going in the rapture? How do you know you're a Christian? You're a follower of Jesus. You let Him lead you. He who does not take up His cross daily, Jesus said in Luke, daily and follow me is not worthy of me. He who puts his hand to the plow and looks back, turns back, is not worthy of me. Go let the dead bury the dead. Come and follow me, he says. He leadeth me beside the still water. You must follow. You must follow. You know, I've heard preachers say this is true about chastisement. They claim what the shepherds do. If a lamb keeps running off and, and getting lost, the shepherd would break the lamb's leg and then carry it on his back. You see that picture of Jesus carrying the lamb with a broken leg? I've heard that preached a few times. The Lord would, you know, the Lord does that, chastens us, that we would be dependent on him. I've heard that many times. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me, here it is again. He leadeth me into paths of righteousness for his namesake. So you can choose. That's someone commented on my last video said, you know, I I know God hates me. I don't respect Jesus and I don't love Jesus and I know 
I'm going to be left behind because I don't, you know, God hates me. And I told him, you can choose. Choose this day, as Joshua said. Choose this day whom you will serve. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You choose. He leadeth me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You choose to be follow, follow the Lord. You make a daily choice, whether the daily decision, whether you will follow the Lord. When you get off track, a.k.a. sin, Mr. Mark, don't follow Jesus, do sin, willfully sin, etc., uh, trespass, all these things, whatever you want to say, all these uh, uh, theological words, then you repent, go back. Repent, go back to following the Lord. Come back. Come back to Jesus. Come back to the Lord. It's never too late to repent. Repent right now. Ask the Lord to forgive you. I, I speak to you right now in the name of Jesus. Repent, repent, repent. Change your mind. The Greeks say repentance is changing your mind. With well, the Hebrews, it's changing your actions. Uh, do both. Change your mind. Bring, as the Bible says in the New Testament, bring every thought, every vain imagination into captivity to the Word of God. See, imagination, that's where we get the word image. Like an image, like an idol. You know, the image of the beast. You know, uh, an idol. It's an image. See, you have this vain image in your mind about pornography, about drugs, about dr getting drunk, about adultery, whatever it is. You've got all those vain imaginations and images in your mind. They're idols. Cast them down. Bring them into captivity to the Word of God. Hallelujah. Give them to Jesus. Say, Lord, help me. Lord, leadeth me. you got to... In Isaiah, God says, come now, you know, remind me. Call me to remembrance of my Word. Remind me that your, you know, that my... Isaiah says that my bones are weak and my frame is, is weak and my body is but dust. You know, Lord, help me, Lord. Call me to remembrance, Lord, you know, of your word. You know, Jesus said, uh, God says in Isaiah, through the prophet Isaiah, you know, let, you know, come now, you know, remind me of my word and my promises. So this is an example. That's why people, like I said, you've got to know the word of God. You've got to stand by faith on the word of God. This is a great example. You look at this word and you read it. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake. That's why you got to call and say, Lord, you said in your word, you're the good shepherd, John chapter 10. Here in Psalm 23, Lord, you said, you are the good shepherd and I shall not want. You said you make me to lie down in green pastures. You leadeth me by the still waters. You said you restore my soul. You leadeth me in the path of righteousness for your name's sake. Lord, lead me. Help me, Lord. Show me the way, just like you did with the children of Israel in the wilderness. You led with a with a uh, you know with, with a pillar of fire by day, uh, and a, a pillar of smoke by day, and a pillar of fire by night. Lord, lead me, show me, open my spiritual eyes that I might see, open my spiritual ears that I might hear, open the eyes of my heart. You know that song, "Open the eyes of my heart, Lord, open the eyes of my heart." I want to see you, I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory, pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 it's a Michael W. Smith song, holy, 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 I want to see you. I want to see you, to see you high and lifted up, shining in the light of your glory. I got that song somewhere. Pour out your power and love as we sing holy, 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 holy. I want to see you. I want to see you. Ask the Lord to open the eyes of your heart. Follow Him. Yea, listen to this. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. See, the Lord leads us to the valley of the shadow of death. Like I just mentioned in this video. Thank you, Lord. Lord is tying it all together. Joseph went through the valley of the shadow of death. For all those years, he was about 17 until he was 30. He began to reign in Egypt at about 30, the Bible says. So what is that? Uh, three, uh, 13 years or so, he was in that valley of the shadow of death, dead to his father. See, and it was even after they went down and he revealed himself to his brothers during the famine that he came back to life to his father again. I never even thought about that either. See how much wisdom the Lord has given me? I know we're close to the rapture because he's given me all this great stuff. All of these are great sermons. You know, you could write a book on every one of these topics. Just 
I'm scratching the surface here. Like the videos I made before, you know, Abraham received Isaac as back from the dead. He was told by God, hey, go sacrifice your son on this mountain while I'll show you. Then it says in the next verse, three days later, they got to that mountain. Jesus was in the ground three days. And then it says in Jude, you know, Abraham received Isaac as if he was back from the dead. Just as a type of Jesus back from the dead after the third day. Now here is Joseph, uh, Joseph was dead to his father. They told Jacob, hey, Joseph is dead. And for all those years, 13 years plus the first year or two of the famine, like 15 years to Jacob, his son Joseph was dead. And he received Joseph back from the dead. Praise God Almighty. See, there's, and that's a whole other sermon. I got, I, I need to keep notes on this. There's one sister that's supposed to be giving me nugget notes and I'm supposed to go back and make videos. But uh, she knows who she is too. But uh, anyhow, uh, you know, there's, that's a whole other sermon. You know, there's things in our lives that we think are dead that God can resurrect and bring back. You know, they're, they're as good as dead to us, but God can bring them back. Ministry, our relationship with Him, all these kind of things that be brought back from the dead brothers and sisters. That's a whole other sermon. Um, Even though I walk, yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. You know, the Lord is leading us through those things. You know, we go with the Lord. That's what I'm, that's a whole other sermon. That's what I'm trying to say. The rapture in this case but, you know, God can give you a vision like uh, about the Lord told me years ago about doing orphanages, even though that's just a part of the ministry. That's not the, you know, the, the end point of my ministry, but that's something the Lord talked to me about years ago. He showed me years ago, like 10 years ago, about doing orphanages. And then it was all that time before we did them. But the Lord had told me about it, and then there was a valley, and then there it was. So he showed me that mountaintop, but I didn't know that there's a valley to go through to get to that mountaintop. So just like with Joseph, he had his dream and his dreams about them worship, you know, bowing down to him, that he would be a ruler over his family. And then all through that valley, then it did happen. It did happen as God showed him as he went through that valley of the shadow of death. So we are going through that valley. Each one of us have our different valleys that we're going through in our life. But of course, the valley for the church and to the valley of Jehoshaphat for the world. That's the valley of decision. You know, the multitude's multitude in the valley of decision. That's the valley of Jehoshaphat. To decide, in that case, whether they will accept Christ, whether they will betray Israel and, and stand against Israel and stand against the tribulation saints, etc. That's in Joel. See, and it says, they all walk, Yea, thou walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil. Why would you not fear evil? For thou art with me. If you are following Jesus, you will be with him. Amos 3, 3 as another witness. And except two, how can two walk together except they be in agreement? That's Amos 3, 3. I want to say this. How you know if someone is from God and really a pastor, really a preacher, not necessarily a pastor. There are people who are pastors, people evangelists, uh, prophetic ministries, etc., when they quote from Bible verses, and then you, if you know the Bible good enough, you know whether they're twisting that scripture or not. Tons of people on YouTube don't even give any scriptures. They're just talking wacky out of their own flesh. Other people, they take scriptures and twist them. That's where you get cults, Mormons, Jehovah Witnesses, etc. That's how you know. And God, I thank the Lord, He gives me plenty of Bible verse witnesses like a machine gun, a whole lot more. I only give part of what the Lord is filling my mind with as I'm speaking all the time. That's why I pause sometimes because the Lord is just giving me boom, 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 all these witnesses. Praise God Almighty. You know, I used to watch, when I was new, I used to watch Dr. Watch Dr. Jack Van Impey when I was new. And uh, he is known as the walking Bible. And I prayed, you know, Lord, I wish that I could do Bible verses like him. And the Lord, you know, lets me do it, but spiritually, like I hear it, like it's, it's flowing, not, you know, from my own memory, but it's somewhere in my subconscious where I read it, but it's not like I memorized it. It's just coming up by the Spirit of God. It's, it, so I praise God for that. It's awesome. And it's, a, and it's a one sign, as an example from other people too, that they're hearing from God. When they give you Bible verses rightly divided, not twisted or cajoled to fit to their doctrine, etc. Anyway, for thou art with me. If I'm following the Lord, He is with me. If the Lord is not with you, you are not following Him. Amos 3.3 3. How can two walk together except they be in agreement? That's why we have all this division in the church. If I'm following Jesus and you're following Jesus, we should be walking pretty close to each other. But we have all this division in the church because 
people are walking with Jesus at varying degrees. They're partially walking with Jesus or not at all walking with Jesus. They're cults. They're crazies. They're out in the middle of nowhere and, 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 and causing hate and discontent and division among the brethren. They're sowing discord among the brethren. One of the seven deadly sins, as people call it. One of the things that God hates. Sowing discord among the brethren. You know, feet who are swift to spread, uh, spread mischief. That's another one. Let's see. Oh, okay, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. The rod and the staff, of course, of the shepherd is to hook the sheep and pull them back in and chastising, and etc. Chastisement, correction, jerking you back on the path. The Lord does that, but we have to call out to Him. You know, sheep, they'll be bah, bah, when they're lost so that the shepherd will know, come get them. That's a whole other sermon. How many sermons? How many sermons can I touch on in one sermon? The Lord is this. The floodgates of breakthrough have come, brothers and sisters. The floodgates of breakthrough have come. I thank the Lord for that. I thank the Lord for the breakthrough in the ministry and also Joshua's ministry that I do here in the Philippines. The commission of Joshua's ministry is, is a different ministry. As a little child will lead them and suffer little children to come unto me and forbid them not. It's a different. The Lord has given me breakthrough on both sides, so I praise the Lord for that. Verse 5, Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou, uh, we, as I just said, Earlier, talking about the rapture, talking about the marriage supper of the Lamb, it's, it's one, one layer of the interpretation of that. All of these things have multiple interpretations and all those onion layers, brothers and sisters. As I mentioned in the other video, the thing about an onion, too, as I've said often, the Bible's like an onion, all those layers. Another thing the Lord gave me today in that other video, when you peel an onion, it makes you cry. You know, as it, the, the conviction comes upon you out of the layers of the Word of God, it can bring you to emotional reaction, brothers and sisters. Conviction of the Spirit. Praise God. Thou anointest my head with oil, my cup runneth over. Now, the one meaning of that, my head, anointing my hand with oil, they said that uh, the sheep would get all these flies on their face. And of course, sheep don't have hands. They can't get the flies off their face, so they would anoint their head with oil, you know, so they wouldn't get their, you know, bugs bothering them and all this kind of stuff. I've heard preachers say that. You know, and I was just thinking just the other day when the Lord was giving me this about bugs like sickness and disease and all this and, and, and you know, the little uh, uh, things that the enemy tries to do to get us to sin and, and get us upset and hurt us and beat us down and all that. And we have these attacks from the enemy from all different kinds of ways, whether it be temptation or, you know, bad news, someone bearing false witness against you, etc. The things that we go through, especially when you're dealing with uh, social media and all these kind of things, unsaved relatives, etc., that we have to put up with and deal with while we're still walking in this dirt bag that God gave us, this earthen vessel, as Paul calls it, that the oil of the Holy Spirit, you know, when you've got the anointing on you, the Holy Spirit represented by that oil, you know, it's like me or anybody else when I played that worship in here. A lot of you guys, you comment all the time, and it's true for me too. You can be having a bad day, you know, when I was an altar worker in a, in a spirit-filled church, I used to go in there and I'd have a bad day or whatever. There's a lot of traffic trying to get there. I'm in a hurry. I'm running late because I would work nights and get off work and hurry up and get over there in the morning for the Sunday morning service, having worked all Saturday night, 12 hours, and go in there. And then, boom, you know, you get into the praise and worship and then the, that anointing comes. You get your head anointed with oil. And then, you know, those bugs are gone. They're not bothering you anymore. You've got that peace. You've got the joy. You've got the fire. You've got the comfort, the comfort. You anointed my head with oil, my cup burneth over. That's provision, you know, joy. It represents joy, cup running over. Like with wine represents joy. It represents a provision in all things. Hallelujah, like Joseph. Joseph, the provision for Israel, those grain towers were overflowing. You know, the Joseph anointing, hallelujah, is more than enough. You know, as an example, you know, me personally, as the Lord showed me about Joshua's ministry. Years ago, 10 years ago or more, when the Lord was showing me about doing the orphanages and all this stuff, the Lord said, you know, I'm giving you like a Joseph anointing. More than enough. Overflowing. Your cup burneth over with the things that's needed for the Joshua's ministry, which I didn't know it would be called Joshua's ministry at the time, but the ministry I would do in the Philippines. The Lord had given me that over and over again. Patriarchal blessing. Abraham, Isaac, Jacob, and Joseph. The Lord had told me you know, more than 10 years ago, you know, I'm giving you this, probably it was uh, 2003, 2002 or 2003, the Lord was talking to me about this patriarchal anointing, patriarchal blessings. Go look at the life of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. I mean, these people were 
in abundance, uh, more than enough. And Joseph, in particular, you know, he had all this abundance for the use of God's people. As Joseph said, you know, you guys, you know, you, you know, you sold me into slavery and all that, but this was God's doing. It was God's doing to save His people. Hallelujah. Praise God, brothers and sisters. Now, oh, we already did that one. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, my uh, grandmother, who was a Sunday school teacher for 30 years, she says that that goodness and mercy is a, will follow me all the days of my life, a reference to angels. That's what she always told me. It's a reference to angels, goodness and mercy, angels following you, your guardian angels, etc. And uh, I'll stick with that on this uh, layer in this video. Now, uh, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Okay, that's the promise to be in the kingdom of heaven, to be in heaven, you know, with the Lord. Hallelujah, to dwell in this house forever. Praise God, brothers and sisters. That's what it's all about. Even people that are left behind, because there's a brother and I discussed about his wife being left behind all the time because she's a very bad person, a psychopath, as a matter of fact. And then he believes, he, you know, through dreams and stuff that she'll get saved and be a tribulation saint and even, you know, be used as a leader during the tribulation to lead other people to Christ. And he and I, and I always remind that brother, I say, look, seven years of tribulation is nothing. Eternity is what it's all about. Eternity in heaven, if, it, if the tribulation is what it takes to get somebody saved, as opposed to going to hell, let the tribulation come. God's act of mercy, His greatest act of mercy, is the tribulation. Because this brings us into that valley of the shadow of death. So we can be led by Him. We're forced to let His rod and staff comfort us. Because in the valley we can't see nothing else. Only thing we can see is, you know, walk, you know, high hills all around us and no way out. And so we need the shepherd to get out of that valley of the shadow of death. The tribulation is the greatest valley of shadow of death there ever was, brothers and sisters. There ever will be. Millions and millions of people will be saved that would otherwise went to hell if it wasn't for the tribulation. My brothers and sisters, these things are not for us. Praise God Almighty. These things are not for us. For He has redeemed us. That's another word the Lord spoke to me that I forgot. The Lord spoke all these words to me last night when He was showing me about getting in the ark and all that stuff. He said... Praise God because you've been redeemed redeemed from mankind. I, I didn't even look up the verse because I forgot about it. He told me so many things. Uh, like praise God because you've been redeemed from all mankind. I don't know the Bible verse. You can Google it. Use the Google or Esword, etc. Look it up. Uh, redeemed from mankind. These have been redeemed out of mankind. It's a Bible verse. I'm not sure. Anyway, brothers and sisters, God bless you. I want to pray for you. I want to pray for you and speak the blessings of God on you right now. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus Christ, the Son of the living God, the Most High God, Creator of heaven and earth, Thou that standeth before the throne of God, and speaketh mighty things unto your people, Thou Yeshua, Hamashiach, Son of the living God, we give you the praise. Thou that is worthy to open the seals, Thou that is worthy to look upon that book, and take it in your hands and lift it up and open those seals. Thou that are worthy, hallelujah, hallelujah, to finish the work in glory. Thou that are our King of kings and Lord of lords, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in us as it is in heaven. Father, we honor you. We praise you, Lord God. Hallelujah, for you have given us Jesus Christ. Hallelujah, the capstone of our salvation, the captain of our ship. Hallelujah, the anchor for our soul. Hallelujah, the deliverer, the redeemer, the mighty God. Hallelujah, the Lord of Sabaoth is His name. Hallelujah, hallelujah, Lord God. Let Thy will be done in us, Lord. Let Thy kingdom come. Maranatha, Lord, Maranatha, Maranatha, let Thy will be done in us as it is in heaven, Lord God. Lord, move these mountains in Jesus' name from in front of thy people. Move these mountains, Lord. We speak it in Jesus' name right now. For you said, Lord Jesus, Mark chapter 11, verse 23 and 24, Whomsoever shall say in these mountains, Be thou removed and cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart those things that he saith. When he saith them, they shall come to pass. Hallelujah, 
Hallelujah. Father, we speak. Mountains of doubt be removed in Jesus' name. Mountains of sorrow be removed in Jesus' name. Mountains. Mountains of despair be removed in the name of Jesus. Mountains of defeat be removed in the name of Jesus. Mountains of destruction be removed in the name of Jesus. Mountains of defeat be removed in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. I speak joy, unspeakable and full of glory. Hallelujah. I speak, hallelujah, delights, delights unspeakable at the table of the Most High God. Hallelujah. For He anointeth our heads with oil. Hallelujah. He prepares that table for us in the presence of our enemies. Hallelujah, Lord God. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. For the Lord is good and his love endures forevermore. For, for the Lord is good and his love endures forevermore. Tell him. For, for the Lord is good and His love endures forevermore. Father, we thank You, Lord, for Your peace. We thank You for Your grace. We thank You for Your mercy. We thank You for Your joy. Now I speak, Lord, I speak Your peace, Your joy, and Your love and provision in all things. Don't be afraid of asking God for provision. For He says, you have not, for you ask not. I speak God's provision on you. Health, wealth, wisdom, peace, joy, and love to be upon you. Not by might nor by power, but by my spirit, saith the Lord. I speak it. His blessings upon you right now. Hallelujah. The wealth of the world be transferred to the church. Hallelujah. In all things, in all things, in all things. In Jesus' name. You know, one of the things the Lord showed me, brothers and sisters, I want to add this on here. I had to dream and I had all these different parts. I had about, I bet I've had 10 dreams in the last three nights. All of them are beyond, beyond understanding and explanation. But in one part, I was sitting at a table of the world, of the richest people in the world, and there was a man sitting beside me, an old man. Later on, I found out the man was the father. But in my dream, I didn't know that. And those rich people were eating all the most fanciest foods in the world. And, you know, they didn't give me any. And the Lord said, you know, this old man said to the cook, who I didn't know it was God. He said, give him some of this food. And he gave it to me. Then he told him later on, give him some of that other stuff. He gave it to me. Everything that he said to the man, he gave to me. Then later on, I found out it was the father. Later on in the dream, because I said, you know, they didn't give me. He said, why didn't you ask for food? And I said, well, you know, I, I'm not one of these people. I'm not going to ask them for any food. You know, I don't want them, you know, to ask them, and then they won't give me any. And he said, I know, because I'll tell them to give it to you, and they'll give it to you. So God even tells the world, and commands the world, talking about the orphanages and et cetera, of this ministry, or anybody that's a Christian. God commands even the devil's people to give unto his people, whatever he wants to. God uses wicked people all the time to do his will as he used Nebuchadnezzar to bring his judgment on Israel. He used the Assyrians to bring his judgment on the northern kingdom of Israel. He even used Judah to betray the Lord that he would be crucified. That was God's plan. So God has his will done, overrides all things. When God has something he wants to do, he will override all things, all systems, all things, and a.k.a. we call it a miracle. When God reaches into His own system that He set up, nature, like you talk about the creation and nature, that we get sick, we die, etc., God overrides that anytime He wants to by His sovereign grace and will. Oh, or, and also, He's moved by our faith. As I just quoted from that Mark 11, 22, 23, and 24. Of 22, Jesus said, Have faith in God. For whomsoever shall say to this mountain, Be thou removed, and cast in the sea, and shall not doubt his heart, he shall have those things that he saith. When he saith them, he shall have those things. He saith that he saith. So by faith, our faith can move God also. 
But anyway, God reaches in and does something. We call it a miracle, a sign and a wonder. God has overridden the natural course of events that He set up in His creation. Brothers and sisters, the weapons that we have, offensive weapons we have, is the Word of God and faith in that. If you have a sword and you think if you hit something with that sword, it's going to break, well, that's a whole nother sermon. You've got to have faith in your sword, faith in your weapon. You've got to know how to use it. You've got to know the Word of God or you can't use it. God bless you, brothers and sisters. May the peace of God be with you. May the grace of God be upon you and bless you and keep you in the name of Jesus. We're out of here soon. You know, I try to get off that topic. But the Lord just brought me back and gave me a, a new, you know, a commission, recommissioned me on that topic, which is the whole theme of the church, Church of the Firstborn, to prepare to be raptured, get in the ark, any other way you want to say it. It's time for the rapture. It's time to get ready. There's nothing else to talk about. There's no other excuses but to be rapture ready. And the Bible says, Paul told Timothy, you know, uh, you know, stir up the gift that lies within you. You know, stir up your faith. Get yourself fired up, you know. Get on fire. Get yourself all stirred up and worked up, you know. I like uh, people, you know, drinking a bunch of coffee and getting all wired up. You know, work yourself up. D read the Word. Do some praise and worship and get yourself, you know, get some uh, uh, Starbucks, uh, King, Starbucks Virgin King James. Get yourself all stirred up and fired up. And, uh, uh, you know, get the, uh, uh, the Holy Ghost uh, shakes. Not the coffee shakes. God bless you, brothers and sisters.